Welcome to the snapshot of Stop Doing That Sh End Self-Sabotage and Demand Your Life Back by Gary John Bishop. Here, we'll explore the key insights from Stop Doing That Sh Introduction In a day and age without days and ages, a time when identity is fragmented to the point of unrecognizability, and the number of one-stop solutions for life's biggest questions has reached an all-time low, how are you to navigate the seemingly endless options set before you when it comes to achieving health and happiness? The only way to even begin improving yourself in a way that benefits all is to acknowledge two very simple but important realities. First, that everyone is fueled by bullshit. And second, that acknowledging your bullshit enables you to transform it into something proactive. The philosophy behind this philosophy gets to the core of the human condition. You are exactly who you think you are. If you think that life is overwhelming, then life is overwhelming. If you think you can handle it, then you can handle it. Nothing more, nothing less. You create these realities by the scripts you read from when talking to yourself. It's time to flip those scripts and use them to your advantage. It isn't life that has worn you out, but your own dialogue about it. The Powerlessness of Positive Thinking you might remember an old Saturday Night Live sketch with Al Franken as Stuart Smalley, a self-professed positive thinking expert whose catchphrase, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me, struck comedic gold. Franken's repressed character epitomized precisely what's wrong with positive thinking. It ignores all the excess emotional baggage lurking within you. Before you can overcome something in yourself you don't like, you must acknowledge what you don't like. No shortcut, however well-intentioned, is going to save you from the challenge of working through your anxieties. It might dress up the window of those anxieties, but take a good look through it, and you'll find them partying away all the same. The problem is, human beings aren't wired to feel things simultaneously. Either you're angry or you're loving. You can't be both at once. The question then becomes, which way are you going to be? Answering this question starts with you owning up to every choice you make. And to do that, you must dig deep into yourself for a little house cleaning. This requires real thinking, the kind of thinking that happens when your current paradigm has been turned on its head. Only after this hard introspection can you expect real change to occur. Self-sabotage One of the worst things you can do to yourself is to see everything good as suspect and find ways to subvert it. This self-sabotage can take on forms as dramatic as drug addiction or as subtle as getting things done at the last possible moment. Such behaviors eat into the integrity of your relationships and self-image. The problem here is that you may rarely take the time to step back and look at the bigger picture. Does eating that extra slice of pie really make a difference? In the short term, no. But make it a daily habit, and before long, the ill effects of that decision will rear their ugly heads. If you truly wanted the things you say you do, then you would do everything in your power to achieve them. If you were really committed to losing weight, then you wouldn't keep eating junk. If you really wanted your relationship to last, then you wouldn't keep harping on every insignificant detail until that relationship eroded. The lesson here is clear. If you want an extraordinary life, you must be willing to do extraordinary things. And to do that, you must be tired enough of your own bullshit. Remember. No one can screw things up in your life quite as royally as you can. And trust me, you have. Tricking yourself into thinking you have willpower is one of the worst possible methods for combating this tendency. What experts might call self-discipline isn't a methodology. Rather, it is simply getting done what needs to get done, even though you'd rather be doing something else. The problem is that people crave self-sabotage because they so deeply enjoy the recovery. For example, you may hate fighting with your significant other, yet scarcely crave the makeup sex that will follow. And so, your repeated actions in those regards are intentional. Apathy Your ability to ruin even the best of circumstances stems from something you'd likely rather not acknowledge, your subconscious. When you're born, you don't come pre-installed with internal dialogue. Instead, you cultivate it over time into a master narrative of self-sabotage. As a child, 
you approach the world with genuine curiosity, but somewhere along the way, you replace that universal integrity with something stubbornly individualistic. As philosopher Martin Heidegger put it, Every man is born as many men and dies as a single one. A profound statement to stick in your proverbial pipe. People often complain about children being selfish, when in reality, children find meaning in everything going on around them, not just in themselves. Only when you grow older does everything become about you and you alone. The problem with this mode of thinking is that it primes you to get stuck in emotional roller coasters whose brakes haven't worked in years. The more effort you expend trying to make yourself happy, the more you reinforce the fact that you're unhappy to begin with. So, you settle for the fiction of having changed yourself for the better, when in fact, all you've done is succumb to the clickbait of your own ego. Consequently, you focus more on fixing rather than improving yourself. To put an end to this cycle, you must be fully committed to ending it now. The Blame Game People tend to blame everyone and everything for their problems, rather than blame themselves. Regardless of whether you're right to blame others, to say nothing of the thrill of being able to attribute your problems to outside forces beyond your control, the blame game keeps you stuck in the very problems you're attempting to overcome. But here's the rub. Everyone is subject to forces beyond their control. As such, you are essentially playing the victim card on a table already filled with victim cards. Much of this has to do with what Heidegger called thrownness, by which he defined everything into which we are thrown as individuals. Whether it's your genetics, nationality, or physical stature, you've been thrown into this world as you are, not by choice, but by circumstance. And if you're ever going to live beyond the grasp of that which you've been thrown into, you must accept the hand you've been dealt. There are many things you simply can't change, but you can change how they affect you. In other words, pull your subconscious from the background into the foreground. Otherwise, it will control you from behind the scenes, while you prattle on about fate. A lot of this becomes clear if you think about the nature of truth. Someone who grew up in a trailer park without a father might blame those circumstances for their current failures in life, but that's a truth they've spun out of convenience and under which they've cowered like a frightened animal. You tell yourself that you've lost the will to achieve, so, you just coast through life, convinced this is all there is. So that's it? You're going to throw it all away for a feeling? Welcome to the club. Masters of Illusion People excel at lying to themselves, and they do it all the time. It's one of the most pervasive forms of self-sabotage there is. But if you really take a moment to answer the question of what you think of yourself, your answer isn't likely to be positive. And if it is, you might just want to dig a little deeper. Unfortunately, you may tend to ignore your personal conclusions, whether they're as simple as, I don't matter, or as dramatic as, I have no reason to live. But these are nothing more than negative mantras whose tattered banners have hung over you for so long that you've forgotten that you're the one who hung them in the first place. Take, for example, the common self-sabotaging statement, I'm such a loser. You've told yourself this for so long that whenever something bad happens, you fall into the same trap of self-criticism. What the hell is wrong with me, you ask yourself. Why am I always screwing things up? Now, imagine that you live with this mindset your entire life, as far too many people do. No wonder positive thinking does nothing. It's up against a behemoth of doubt. One of the most liberating things to realize about life is that no more effort is required to live a terrible one then a great one. Your choice in that regard can have a profound effect on your interactions with others. Just as you think you have yourself figured out, you may find yourself making broad assumptions about others and treating them accordingly. And no wonder, making conclusions about others gives you a feeling of security and of having everything figured out, enough to make sense of life. If your personal conclusion is that you'll never be good enough to make a name for yourself professionally, your social conclusion might be that people care only about advancing themselves and not others. Do you see the irony here? Another doozy you may often tell yourself is, life isn't fair. Like the other conclusions, this one can and does have a detrimental effect on how you approach setbacks. Think of the last time something in life really threw you for a loop. 
you've most likely filed it away in that overstuffed drawer labeled inevitables. But take stock of those reactions and see them for what they are, the grandest self-sabotage of them all. Is this how you really want to live? Conclusion The ideas we've just explored can be summarized by the following nuggets of wisdom. 1. Most of your life is spent on autopilot. 2. Your desire to be right is self-destructive. 3. There's nothing so addictive as that which is familiar. 4. You've grown numb to bullshit. 5. Blaming traps you in the problem you're trying to solve. 6. Personal truth and the truth aren't the same. 7. You're always screwing yourself over to give you the satisfaction of saving yourself. 8. You're so enamored of quick-fix solutions that you've lost sight of their emptiness. 9. Living a great life takes no more effort than living a crappy one. 10. You sacrifice your dreams for the fiction that you're happier without them. These are tied together by the three fundamental forms of self-sabotage, personal conclusions, whereby we lie to ourselves about our abilities and worth, social conclusions, whereby we treat others based on our assumptions of them, and the conclusions about life itself. If you're the problem, the only solution is you. About Gary John Bishop Gary John Bishop is regarded globally as one of the most important urban philosophers of our generation. His expertise in personal development and his no-nonsense approach to life have changed countless lives. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of Stop Doing That Shit by Gary John Bishop. If you liked what you heard, then make sure to explore the rest of our snapshot library to continue gaining key insights from nonfiction books in a matter of minutes. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you liked what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.